Hi guys, and um, as usual, welcome to another kit review. Hope you're all well. So today we're going to be looking at a kit from ICM in 135th scale. Okay, and the kit number is 35471. It is ICM's Admiral Cabriolet, World War II German staff car with figures. Okay, so Admiral is actually nothing to do with Navy ranks. It is actually the... Um, maker name for this particular car okay so there she is as you can tell she's a cabriolet so it basically means that the roof falls back it's a soft top okay so let's have a look at the box see what we've got as usual with ICM you get a brief history of the vehicle okay tells you how many cars that they made you also have um, ICM's address in the Ukraine and basic warnings about, you know, a three-year-old can't make this, basically. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and on the other side, this is basically what you'll see in the kit. Okay, so this is the car. Three, three views of the actual car itself in overall dark grey. All right, so fairly... Um, I was going to say basic. I'm just, I say, apologize. I say basic way too much. Okay. So plain box. All right. So let's have a look in the box. So put that over there. And we have got two sets of basic instructions. This will be your figures. This will be for the car. This is, feels like recycled paper. So we'll have a look at those in a second. First up, let's have a look. First brew out is your figures, okay? So because this comes with um, German staff car with figures, these are your figures. All right, so that's first brew, put that out there. That's interesting. Okay, yes, actually. Don't worry about the fact that there's a number plate missing. I believe I may have used that um, for another vehicle at some stage. So, it's all good. All right. Put that out the way. Next bag of sprues and this is all in together. All right. The good thing about ICM is they use resealable bags. All right. So, there's your clear parts and your body of the vehicle. As you can tell, it is not one solid body construction. It is the back, doors, front, okay? So you've got a full roof and mud guards, etc. So we'll have a look at those shortly. And that's what you get. That's two bags of sprues, one of which is your figures. All right, so I'll get rid of this and we'll have a look at the instructions shortly. Okay, so let's have a look at the instructions. So this is a kit from 2011. So older style box, older style instructions. So ICM are constantly um, upgrading their boxes, where they do the instructions and their moulds. So the older ICM kits tend to lack certain refinements, um, but they are getting better and better every day. So let's have a look. So, as I said, brief history of the vehicle, Ukrainian, English, plus specifications, maximum speed, 132 kilometers an hour. Mm, that's not bad. Color call outs, okay. So, English, Ukrainian, they only specify model master, but um, it's a 19th, late 1930s uh, German sedan, so greys, uh, black, or you know, in military service um, overall. Dark grey, Panzer grey, even Luftwaffe grey, 
depending on what branch of service you're going to put it down for. Okay, usual cautions, how to apply the decals, and then let's have a look. So, one, two, three, four, five sprues, just including the clears. Um, basic instructions about making two of this and etc. etc. But fairly straightforward. Now we come on to construction, and as you can see, this car has an engine which is a fairly detailed engine. It would probably only need the addition of um, spark plug leads, etc., to finish it off. All right, so then we move on to the chassis, which unfortunately is, as you can tell, quite a few parts. It's not a single piece chassis so there is scope for getting this out of shape so you have to be very careful putting this together and then these are your tires made up of five separate parts okay to give you a really nice tread pattern color call outs as you go and then once you've got the tires done and strangely, this seems to show white walls, which you wouldn't have on a military vehicle anyway. Chassis, engine, wheels, okay. And then interior, you get your seats, seat backs. And then, so doors, doors also have an interior, of course, because this is an open car. You'll have to paint inside and outside. Um... Okay, so what you've got here is your dashboard and your steering wheel. The steering wheel is made up of three parts, which is, having made a ICM kit before, <sighs> tricky. It's very tricky because there's not much overlap between the actual steering wheel spokes and the, and the steering wheel um, rim. So that's going to take a little bit of care to put that together. And then you get on to attaching the front and the back, okay, and the mud guards to your actual body, okay, mud guards. The good thing is you can leave the bonnet open so you can expose the engine if you want to, either both sides or just one side. However, you will have to look at putting in. Um, Let's see, if I remember rightly, these cars had a brace. It was a, almost like a triangular brace across the top. So, internet references, if you're going to leave this open, if you're going to put um, spark plug leads, etc. on the engine to leave it open, you should also look at what kind of bracing was actually in the engine bay. Okay, so next page, putting it all together. Sides, okay, seats, etc. I would actually probably build the sides, front, etc., and then put it all together at the same time. That way you're guaranteed to line the front of the car up with the sides. If you put it, that in first, let that set, and these don't fit, then you've got dramas and it's painful. And remembering that you have to paint all this as you go, you're better off just constructing it. Bit of the time, wait till you get to this stage, it's all nicely painted, then you put it together. It should fit fine. Okay, and then once you've done that, natural enough, body to the chassis, back bumper, and then you come to the front. All right, so again, you're going to have to paint all this inside first, including the inside of the wheel wells, okay? And then putting it all together. So if this bit is all nice and straight, this should quite easily fit together without too many dramas. And after that, it's just a decision. But since you've got a full interior on this car, with all the details, 
door handles, etc. I would be tempted to leave that off, use the folded canopy, and I'd even be tempted to have the windows down, okay, rather than up. But that's all personal choice. That's how I would have the thing. Okay, so that's basic construction. And then you just get to the painting guide. All right, so what you've got here is Germany 41, Germany 42, Bessarabia 43, and Russia 43. Okay, so four different color call outs, um, number plate decals for the vehicles, and that's it. There are no unit insignias. Okay, so you would have to, if this is going to be um, a military car, you will probably have to dig into your spares box for um, unit decals or um, divisional decals, etc. Okay, and that's the instructions for the car. The other instructions are for the figures. Usual basic ICM, okay? So, three figures, that's the sprue, colour callouts again, model master, Ukrainian and English. There's actually a lot more colour callouts on this than there is on the actual vehicle. Alright, and then on the other side, that's your figures. So you've got one officer who appears to be standing on a shoe shine box and two field police soldiers okay so that's it three figures i would probably use these figures uh, elsewhere but um, that's all comes to luck again all comes down to personal choice so that's the instructions i'll give you another look at the decals and as i said don't worry about the missing one. I've used that elsewhere. The decals are for ICM. Not too bad. You have got decals for the dashboard. Decals for the um, wheel hubs. And number plates. And that's all. So like I said, no divisional or unit signs in this. So you'll have to have a look in your spares box and um, dig some out if you want to allocate this to a specific unit, a Gorosh Duschland or um, something like that. Okay, so in a minute we'll have a look at the sprues. Okay, so let's have a look at the sprues. I think first we will have a look at the important one. The clears okay so windscreen side windows back window headlights that's what you get they look fairly clear but there's a little bit of hazing in uh, these I can see I don't know if you can actually see them in there so as I said this being a Cabriolet I would be very tempted to actually leave the windows down, even if I was using the full um, canopy over the passenger compartment. I'd probably leave the windows down just so you could see the inside detail a bit more clearer and reduce the risk of, you know, making a mess of these. But we'll see. We'll see. But they do look fairly clear and... Uh, not too bad, like I said, a little bit of hazing, but mm, passable. You can get away with that. Speaking of the canopy, so you have two sprues. Hope you can see that. So these, this sprue. That one are exactly the same. And that is your 
folded canopy. Okay, so I'll put that one away. We'll have a look at this. So these are your tyres, okay? So the tyres have no markings on them whatsoever, as far as maker. But they will go together and give you a really nice tread pattern. Okay, springs, minimum detail on the springs, on the leaf springs. It's not really, I guess it's there, but it doesn't stand out. Okay, hood, let's have a look. Turn that over. Not a great deal of um, detail on the hood, but with uh, the right kind of painting and a little bit of um, weathering or wash or something, you could probably pick it out not too bad. Windscreen wipers, quite fine, but uh, yeah, detail's not too bad. The windscreen wipers, I suppose, they're okay. So that's the the tyres. Okay. Put those away. Next room we'll look at will be this one. This is a big screw. So on here you've got the two chassis sides, main members, chassis parts here. Okay. So here you have the steering wheel. Alright, and then you've got just the boot, the seats, backs. Okay, door interiors and engine parts. Okay, so that's your engine. This is your manifold, etc. Uh, looks like gear stick, fan. That'll be an interesting one to take off. And fan belts. Okay, so like I said, that is your steering wheel. It's tricky to get off. That's not too bad, but there isn't much as far as um, plastic to match these two up and glue them together. I have made one before, and it turned out not too bad. It's just a matter of taking some time. Okay, so there you have chassis members. Important part is the engine. So the engine block itself doesn't look too bad. Okay. So you've got fan belt, distributor, etc. Okay, fan blades, gearbox, okay, manifolds. So there's a fair few pips and things like this on these, but still easy come off, and that's actually a really nice looking engine. Okay, this is a full engine, so like I said, addition of some spark plug leads, um, distributor leads to come out really well. And the seat, yes, the seat does have some detail on it. So um, paint that up, put a wash over it, bring the highlights up. Yeah, door interiors exactly the same. Okay, door pockets, all nicely rendered. Yeah, that's not too bad. The tricky part will be Making sure that you get the chassis, which is in several parts, as you can tell, getting that together and straight. But, like I always say, take your time, dry fit first, and uh, yeah, should be fine. Shouldn't be too hard a job to get that together in one piece. Right, so, put that away. Bye.
that brings us to the last screw. Okay, so this is the car body. There. That's your. I keep calling it a hood. I don't know what you'd call it. All right. This is the bottom. Okay, so uh, depending on what color you're going to paint it, you'd have to paint the insiders first. Okay, that's your bonnet. As Americans call it, the hood. Okay. Wheel wells. That's your inside, outside wheel wells. Inside of the doors. Seats. Back of the car. Outside of the doors. So the doors are not opening. I guess if you tried, uh, you might be able to, except the problem is there would be a center pillar here that you'd have to put in. That would be the tricky part. Okay, so let's have a look. There we have it. Okay. There's not a great deal of, what can I say, detail on the car, but then it's a car panel, so you're not going to get a great deal there. This is fairly flat without any kind of texture, which um, it would have a texture because it is folding. It would have a canvas texture, so that would be something you'd be working on if you're going to leave it up. Maybe even just a slight rough up with some, say, 1000 or 2000 grit sandpaper. I'll just give it that little bit of texture that it needs. Okay, so there's your radiator, which you can't see through. So even though you've got a full engine and a radiator behind this, you can't see through the grill. So, yeah, I'd be tempted to leave at least one of the bonnet halves up, if not both. So, I can see some flow lines. I don't know if you can see them on this. I'll give you close-ups anyway. There are flow lines in some of this bodywork, but it shouldn't affect the actual painting once it's painted. It should come up really well. So, in all, this is basically how big this vehicle is. Decent sized vehicle. Alright, so it's a luxury saloon. It's the kind of thing an officer or someone would drive around in. Okay, and the very last brew, the figures. All right, so on this brew, you'll see you'll get three figures. You have one officer, as you can tell by the cap, plus two soldiers and their rifles, K98s. And a police wand. So these, you can tell right there. I think that's focused. These are field police. So you've got two field police, and what I would assume is probably a officer of the field police as well. That is his um, boot stand. So yes, it looks like he is having his boots shined so I think there is or was a ICM kit that included these three figures plus um, I think a young boy or someone shining the officer's boots so they've repurposed those figures for this kit detail quite nice don't know see if I can get that in focus for you guys there we go go about there faces are quite nice okay detail on the uniforms including the field police gorgets 
or gorgettes, I can never remember how you say it. The rifles have really nice detail, bayonets, etc. So yeah, the detail on the figures, the faces, and the uniforms is quite, quite crisp and sharp. There is a bit of flash around the heads, around the faces, and of course you'll have mold lines on the figures. But apart from that, these are quite nice. Right, so that's the last figure. Give you some stills for this, and um, yeah, we'll carry on from there. Here. Overall, it's not a bad vehicle. As I said, this is a 2011 kit, so it is nine years old, and ICM have improved their mold techniques um, quite a lot in recent years. So, yeah, this would not be a hard kit to put together for even a moderate beginner not a brand new beginner because there's a lot of fiddly bits to it but yeah still kind of thing that you cut your teeth on i think when it comes to icm cars anyway enough of peak going on thanks for watching i hope you did get something from this review and um until next time stay well stay healthy and i'll see you later